Hello and welcome to my first impressions of SnowRunner, new game that released today, uh, the successor to Spin Tires and Mud Runner, and this will be something of a live impressions, live, not quite a live stream, more like a sped up live stream of free flowing comments and sped up footage in between where nothing really interesting happens. Um, I'm still in the midst of the tutorial, more or less, now on the second map where you actually see the first snow and working my way along this very snowy path. I found this trailer to bring it to a fuel station and get some money for it. Uh, now first impressions, this is deliberately not uh, review of some kind or um, like an evaluation of the game that's none of my business just talking about some stuff that I find uh, interesting or noticeable um, and don't take it as a full cover coverage of this game what you should take away though is that this is not for everyone. This, if if you don't know what spin tires is, if you don't know um, the predecessor, this is not a racing game. This is not even a very fast-paced game. It's about delivering stuff, basically, through very hard terrain, through off-roading. Um, it's not about getting somewhere very fast or shooting someone, but getting somewhere at all. It's very comparable, in, uh, in my opinion, with um, Death Stranding for that point. It's kind of a strand game, as Hideo Kojima would call it, but other people might call it a delivery game. You're picking up stuff and need to go somewhere. And as you can see, it is quite slow paced. It's definitely not for um, looking for loads of adrenaline or something. Now, why aren't you moving? The truck is all wheel drive, but it has just road tires. Those are not off road tires. And it is in low range, and now it. yeah. It seems to find some grip there maybe not enough there is no road underneath this snow as you can see there is just mud also this is not a real driving simulation it's more of a like an off-roading simulation it has very good physics for off-road, but as soon as you go a little bit faster with, with the vehicle, it starts to feel weird. More emphasizing um, that it is for slow progression. Oh yeah, capture that rock there. Good. Mm, damn it. Let's see if we can get ourselves out somehow. What about that? Now first impression th to that winch much better than the the last game. It doesn't it's no longer just um, just a, a gray line, it's now an actual rope of some kind. Damn it. As you can see, we're quite stuck here. Oh, we can reach that tree. Excellent. This will get us free. Oh, yes. There we go. What you saw there, this is basically the core gameplay here. 
So, as I said, this is not for everyone. If you can't find any fun or tranquility or something like that in this kind of doing stuff, if you find this boring, this game is not for you. To get into uh, first impressions now, the graphics look much much better. You can see much much further than in Mudrunner. It all looks a lot more polished. The surface degradation and the physics of the off-roading feel very much the same. Which is not a bad thing, they were great. It, it's probably the best slow running off-road simulation uh, you can find. And it seems to have a lot, lot more depth to to the whole game than the Madrona had. For example, if we look at the map, you now get a bunch of companies. You now get contracts with different kinds of cargo that you can deliver, get money for it. Um, it's not just logs. Actually, I don't think it's any logs at all. Um, like in the first games, but different kinds of cargo. You still get those watchtowers as in Mudrunner. But now you get paid for all those contracts. It's not just deliver eight logs in this map and then you have beaten the map. That was basically the thing for the last game. Um, now you're actually having kind of a career. Uh, as I said, this is still just the second tutorial map, more or less. But these maps are also interconnected with each other. There are several of these maps. Um, you now have a fleet of vehicles that you own, that you can upgrade. You can modify the vehicles in your garage. Um, so, like fitting better tires, fitting a snorkel, all of that paid for money, which you earn with those contracts. And overall it just feels much more of an actual game with progression, with with uh, a goal to do, than just a physics sandbox for log delivery, which kind of was the point. It still is the point. The, the delivery is the point. The getting somewhere is the whole point. But now uh, immediately it feels like you're actually getting some kind of reward for it like you're getting um, a benefit from doing it for example the first mission i did on this map was uh, getting some steel from down here somewhere and delivering it to a broken pipeline this pipeline here was broken was lying on the road and i delivered it and that, that repaired the pipeline. Now it arches over the road and the road is free again. Uh, before that you couldn't pass here, now you can pass through it. So doing that contract not only gave me money, but actually gave me a gameplay change, an advantage to drive on this paved road uh, quicker from there to there. This adds to the whole thing of it feeling more like a game, like an actual game with progression. But now let's get this uh, fuel to the fuel station. Oh, the snow looks quite nice. I haven't seen that yet.
So we delivered that trailer. I don't really know what that is. The red uh, square there doesn't offer me anything. This neither. I assume I need some kind of crane for that. I don't know. So, let's find ourselves some more money opportunity. Now here we have a river which you should always I think stop before you cross them. Um, this is something I actually have real life experience in. I have driven through rivers before. Uh, all of which were in Iceland and all of which were part of main roads but uh, it looks even less like a road than this does. So. Yeah, it is quite scary if you first drive into a river because your car gets all light and starts to swim because uh, the tires obviously don't want to get drowned. They have air inside and your chassis gets light and you don't have a lot of grip if the ground has um, moving rocks in it. But you need to learn that in Iceland to get along to acquire some skills in river crossing. Which basically boils down to... Um, maybe I will make a video on this because it, it applies in video game as in real life in, in the same way. Um, you basically look for a place where the water is quite white because of many undulation and it gets quite white in width so the volume of water stretches itself over a large area and it gets uh, fast flowing if it's fast and white that means it's shallow also I didn't do that here because it was very shallow where I crossed but uh, you should always try to cross a river with the flow so slightly at an angle and not against the flow not up upstream to let the river help you push across what you want to avoid is to stop in the middle of a river or even let your engine go out because that is like a death sentence you won't get out of that if uh, water gets inside of your engine. Um. But this worked as expected. Let's go back uh, a little bit. But I expected this kind of... Because the first Matrana did already a great job in... What the hell is that? There's a trailer in the river. Hmm. Well, we have a big truck. We could. We don't have the tires for that. But depending on how deep it is. Well, let's see if we can reach that trailer. Thing I wanted to say is, um, you should never cross a river if you wouldn't walk across it at the same place uh, on foot as as well. If you think like it's too deep to walk across, it's also too deep to drive across. Now what I'm looking, uh, what I'm doing here is looking for uh, what I explained just a minute ago. Here you can kind of see the ground and the water is flowing 
a little bit faster. There it gets a little bit slower and you can see the ground harder, so I assume the water is deeper there. And I will try to drive in here. Uh, whenever I'm unsure in the real world, I would actually stop the car, get outside, take a look around on foot. Uh, maybe even get in the water to test it. But since this is just a game and you can't even get out anyway. I should be able to just... yeah, yeah, it's flat enough. This is what I meant with uh, letting the river push you across. You kind of go sideways into the flow to not drive against the river force itself. Add a flat area where the water moves fast and is shallow and then you should get across. And now we're stuck. But not due to the river itself but due to the mud in front of us. No, because of a rock on the trailer. The rock on the trailer is in the way. Get across there. Yes, 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 yes. Now with mud pits in itself, so like water holes, the, the rules kind of change. At least for normal water holes you will find that uh, where they are deepest, they are m most of the time uh, best compacted because everyone already drove through it at the deepest point, so they shouldn't get any deeper. When you drive mud holes on the sides, you might make them even deeper than they were in the first place, and you should try to avoid that. Not only for nature and for the road, also for your car because the, the ground might be less stable on the side. Although when you can when you are when you are when it's not fully across the road, um, at least for off-roading you can go uh, around the sides to find more grip. But please don't do that in Iceland. That destroys their uh, roads, they have very little vegetation and it won't grow back. Makes a lot of damage, but I don't know. In the Tiger of Russia, that might be a viable option. Yeah, yeah, game, I don't need a recover. Be a little patient with me, I will get through this.
So actually I was wrong, I just found out. That is not a delivery task, that is just an, like an exploration task. You just have to get somewhere. As it seems. Uh, find radio station. Hey, you just have to get somewhere. I assume the path is very, very difficult. But you can... You could use a very light scout vehicle for that. I will not do that with a truck. Um, well, that is not a delivery. Yeah, I was I was wrong. Yeah, I'm kind of just accepting everything. But since we have seen nightfall, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just destroyed uh, the fence with my semi truck after driving over there alone. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I think this is a great place to to stop the first impression. You've seen some deep snow. You've seen the uh, slow-paced, meditatingly gameplay of this this title. I'm quite uh, positively. Um, surprised so far it's all the improvements I have wished for from Mudrunner at least so far ha hasn't been a contract sign here too well whatever um, you've seen some river crossing some river even some river uh, crossing guidelines tutorial <laughs> or whatever and you've seen and the snow. Ah, here is another river crossing. Let's do that too. Now here I would actually deviate a little bit from my... from what I said, because you can clearly see many rocks uh, on the sides there as I show there it is flowing fast, it is not very deep but it is like a ditch with all those rocks in between so the most obvious way would be to go actually there but if you can do it maybe across these rocks and then into the stream letting being pushed across here yeah, is like that Okay, now for real. Let's let's uh, finish it here. Um, if this receives enough views or likes, I might do some more videos about SnowRunner. I definitely will play it a little bit, or quite a lot more, as I find it quite um, chilled out. Just trying to get uh, to to trail your way along very treacherous ter terrain. It's kind of a video game for overlanding, if you know what that is. Like like where the, the whole journey is the actual goal of traveling. Um, I also like to do very uh, kind of remote road trips when I'm actually going on holiday. So <laughs> that is kind of with the whole um, event currently globally happening all those holidays or holiday plans are um, not happening as well so <laughs> this this will probably my be my overlanding experience for this year as I don't see uh, many possibilities to go abroad anymore sadly enough well well I'll leave you at that I wish you a happy nice day or evening or morning or whenever you're watching this and see you next time cheers